greetings from the department of ECE, SJBIT. And today in this session, you will be learning about uh, the following topics like reflex clistron and performance characteristics, construction and working of that through Applegate diagram, then modes and mode curves, uh, followed by the power output and efficiency, operating frequency and propeller voltage, uh, problems related to that, followed by the applications. Previous session, we had seen the conventional tubes as we can't make use at microwave frequencies. The reason for that is the limitations which we have uh, showed as inter-electro capacitance and lead inductance effect will limit the response and gain bandwidth product, radiation uh, losses, conductor and dielectric losses will limit the transit time effect, will limit the conventional tubes uh, to make use at gigahertz range. So in uh, keeping that in mind, uh, they have designed uh, oscillators or amplifiers in the microwave region to operate with a uh, different uh, technology. And uh, the microwave tube family, if you look at, they have classified that into two types based on the magnetic field and electric field uh, uh, relation, linear type and cross field types. In linear beam tubes, you can observe, in linear beam type, we also call that as a O type. In linear beam type, the DC magnetic field is in parallel to the DC electric field. And whereas in cross field tubes, name itself indicates, DC magnetic field and the electric field are perpendicular to each other. So under linear beam tubes, uh, we are studying about two types of structures you have. It may be slow wave structures or it may be cavity structures like a clistron. So in clistrons, again, they have classified into three types based on the number of cavities that you have. Reflex clistron, which is made use as an oscillator with a single cavity and two cavity, multi-cavity type, they'll make use that as an amplifier. And in the slow wave structures, you have a traveling wave tube and backward wave oscillator to make use either as an amplifier or as an oscillator. In the same manner, cross field tubes, you have a different types like magnetron, gyretron and calcinetron, different types of uh, oscillators or amplifiers that we have. So in your syllabus, it is included uh, the reflux clistron type. So you can say that it is a clistron structure, which is of linear beam tube under the microwave family, tube family. Uh, we know that clistron, uh, we'll look at a clistron construction and working followed by the rest of the procedures. So clistron is the one which is invented by uh, Russell and Vari Russell Varian and SP Varian in 1939. So it is a vacuum tube actually, which can be used either as an amplifier or as a uh, generator or we also call it as an oscillator of microwave uh, frequency. There are basically two configurations in these tubes which is a clistron, reflex clistron and multi-cavity clistron. Reflex clistron is the one which is used as a low power microwave oscillator whereas the multi-cavity or two cavity two or more means more than that uh, cavities if you have that type we call it as a multi cavity clistron which is made use uh, as a low power microwave amplifier so uh, reflux clistron as i specified it is used as a low power microwave oscillator it consists of a single cavity we will look into what is a cavity uh, it, it consists of a single cavity and it generates a variable frequency uh, from uh, 1 gigahertz to 200 gigahertz. So basically it works on the reflections and oscillations which are produced in that single cavity. And if you look at the performance characteristics of the reflex clistron, you can see the diagram, uh, constructional diagram of your reflex clistron. One side you have a anode and another side you have a cathode. And the middle part is nothing, nothing but the cavity. Middle portion you can observe it is a cavity where your RF power output uh, will come out. Then if you look at the uh, performance characteristics, usually for any device, uh, if it is an oscillator, we will be specifying the efficiency, 
operating frequency range, power output and uh, uh, tuning range of that. So it is a microwave uh, signal generator as we know it microwave is the signals which starts from uh, in the gigahertz range 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So uh, uh, RF uh, reflex klystron can be used to operate a frequency range of uh, to generate a frequency range of 1 gigahertz to 200 gigahertz with a low power output. The power output which you will get out of this klystron is very less which is from 10 milliwatts to 2.5 milliwatts and even low efficiency so not even up to 30 percent you will get a theoretical efficiency up to 22.78 only. So practically if you uh, practical efficiency is still more less than that 10 to 20 percent and the tuning range as you can observe 5 gigahertz you will get with a power output of 2 watts and 30 gigahertz if you operate at high frequency to 30 gigahertz which gives you a power output of 10 milliwatts. Uh, 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 operating uh, power output and the frequency inversely proportional. And now we will look at the construction and uh, working of reflex klystron. So reflex klystron specified it works as an oscillator with a single cavity. So to uh, any vacuum tube structure if you observe we will have an electron gun cathode and uh, anode and a grid even in the same manner here the reflex klystron which consists of an electron gun to generate the electrons and a cathode filament actually along with this electron gun and cathode filament it generates the oscillations and an anode cavity where you will get the power output and maintained at a high poten uh, positive potential and you have an electrode repeller electrode which is uh, maintained at, uh, at a cathode potential very high negative potential it will be maintained. So three components you have you have an electron gun cathode filament an anode cavity and a repeller electrode. So uh, if you look at the structure the electron gun function of an electron gun is to emit the electrons. So on these electrons which will pass through that cavity as it is maintained at high potential high positive potential. In between uh, you have a accelerating grids so which will insist the electrons the purpose of having an accelerating grid uh, is to accelerate is to insist the electrons to travel in a linear path and all these electrons while passing through the uh, uh, anode cavity will gain some velocity so based on the uh, based on the sine wave sinusoidal wave which is generated in that anode cavity velocity of that accordingly varies so you can also say that uh, the reflex klystron works with on a principle of uh, velocity modulation we will soon we will look into what is a velocity modulation and how it varies and uh, as these electrons which are traveling uh, through the accelerating grid in a linear path and they'll travel towards the other end which is uh, having a repeller electrode and that repeller electrode which is maintained at very high negative potential. So electrons we know that it is at negative potential and even the repeller electrode which we are telling it is maintained at negative potential. As we know from basic uh, magnetic theory uh, uh, two means uh, opposite poles will repel each other as they are uh, having I means uh, same poles attract each other and uh, opposite poles attract each other same poles repels each other as you, as the electrons and uh, uh, even the repeller electrode which is maintained at high potential they are at the same um, uh, means a negative potential and the electrons will be of negative value and they will repel back okay electrons will be repelled back and to and they will repel back towards the cavity anode cavity so in their return journey the electrons will give more energy to that gap. So uh, these oscillations are sustained. So actually it undergoes a velocity modulation and which forms electron bunching. And uh, initially any oscillations uh, initially due to the noise or due to switching transients, uh, initial oscillations will be set up in the device. And these oscillations will be sustained due to the operation. So this can be understood in a better way by using a Applegate diagram.
you can observe this is the constructional uh, diagram of your reflux clistron as we have specified this is an electron gun with a filament this is a filament and electron gun which emits the electrons as we have specified and this is your anode cavity middle portion which is maintained at positive potential and you have a grid structure and this grid purpose of this grid is to uh, make the electrons to pass through this grids to have a linear path and at the other side you can observe you have a repeller electrode so which is maintained at very high negative potential so this voltage is called as a repeller voltage and this voltage sometimes we call it as a anode voltage or the beam voltage and the space between your anode cavity and the repeller electrode we call it as a repeller space so as soon as the electrons which are emitted from the electron gun they will pass through this anode grid to have uh, because of that with, they choose a linear path and they'll travel towards your repeller electrode as it is maintained at very high negative potential as we know that if uh, the electrons are of negative and even repeller electrode is of negative they will repel back so electrons will be repelled back and they'll give maximum power output uh, during their return journey they'll give a maximum power output to the anode cavity where you will take out the rf power output so as uh, in the previous case we have specified the velocity modulation will occur in the uh, um, repeller space so coming to this velocity modulation to understand that uh, uh, velocity modulation the working of reflex clistron you can understand it in better way by using apple gate diagram and you can look at this diagram showing uh, this is your uh, anode uh, repeller space from your anode cavity to repeller grid uh, repeller electrode there is a distance between uh, that is a distance from cavity to the repeller uh, electrode then uh, you can observe a small sinusoidal signal which is representing a voltage across the cavity anode cavity grids so this small sinusoidal voltage voltage across the cavity grids will accelerate the electrons accelerate or decelerate the electrons and you can observe uh, bunching bunch formation suppose let us consider to understand the working in a better way you have a sinusoidal uh, voltage which is across the grids and you observe electron a electron b and electron c so let us consider electron b all these three electrons which will be traveling till from electron grid to the uh, till to anode grid with the same velocity at the anode grid because of this voltage the acceleration of the electrons will vary because of that uh, the distance traveled from your grid towards your uh, towards uh, from cavity towards your grid varies so we know that velocity v is nothing but distance by time so keeping the time constant we know that velocity phi increase distance traveled by that electron will also get increased okay so now let us consider electron b is the reference electron which uh, means with a zero accelerate with a zero acceleration zero acceleration in sense uh, we have not accelerated that electron then electron a you observe which we had given with a maximum positive potential which means accelerating the that electron more acceleration and electron c with a negative potential so deceleration and you can observe the distance traveled by these three electrons as electron a is more accelerated so uh, velocity will be more uh, obviously the distance traveled by that will be more you can observe it travels a more distance compared to electron b and similar to electron c observe uh, as it is decelerated the distance traveled will be less so but all these three electrons will reach the Uh, cavity that is anode cavity at the same time and they will form a bunch uh, all these three electrons will form a bunch so that is a return bunches will return here uh, means which will return to the anode cavity at one particular time so with reference to your reference electron we will be calling that which mode it is so with reference to your reference electron you know that uh, one full cycle 
so here you have one half cycle then one fourth of a another cycle means a quarter half cycle plus quarter cycle so 3 by 4 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 gives you 3 fourth of a cycle we call this as a first mode suppose with reference to the reference electron if the electron bunches reaches at 1 3 by 4 1 cycle plus 3 by 4 you observe with reference to the electro, uh, reference electron one complete cycle negative plus positive one complete cycle then another one half cycle plus one one fourth of a cycle so together representing one three by four so this is second mode two three by four reaches after two cycles then three by four three by fourth uh, in and so on so uh, the bunch formation depends upon mainly uh, the anode uh, voltage and the repeller voltage and uh, the length, repeller space, repeller space length. All these things will decide uh, at what exactly at what periods the electron bunch will be formed. Okay, so uh, the same theory can be explained by considering early electron, uh, late electron and reference electron. So you can uh, understand this working by some assumptions. So electron beam is accelerated towards the anode cavity, the assumption. We consider a reference electron, that is electron B, uh, crosses the anode cavity but with no extra velocity because uh, it has crossed with at zero and ripples back after reaching the repeller electrode with the same velocity. It will not change. The distance traveled by that we consider as a reference. Next, another consider another electron which we call it as an early electron which has started earlier to this reference and will have a maximum positive voltage across the gap. Obviously, it travels, uh, means acceleration of that has got increased, velocity of that has got increased. So, it penetrates more deeper into the repeller space because more energy that it has got, so it travels more distance. Or you can say that velocity is equal to distance by time. Velocity I am increasing, obviously the distance will also get increased. And But it returns slowly, reaching at the same time. But you observe time taken will be same time. At the same time it will return as a reference electron. And in the same manner we considered another electron, we call it as a late electron, starts later than reference and earlier. So, which will have a maximum negative voltage deceleration, we call it as a retarded velocity and uh, uh, it returns in a shorter time but catches up with the earlier and the uh, uh, reference electron. So, now all these three electrons which will reach the gap at the same time and they will form an electron bunch. So, the time taken for these electrons to return back, we call that as a transit time. Uh, which will have an optimum value. Bunching process usually occurs once in a cycle, once per cycle. And these bunches gives a maximum energy to the anode cavity. And based on that transit time, optimum values, oscillations will be set up. So as we have specified, transit time, it is the time taken by an electron to travel through the repeller space. And again back to the gap. So time taken by the electron to travel through the space, repeller space and again back to back to the gap. So to get the sustain, we represent that as a transit time as a T. So to get the sustained oscillations, this transit time have to have an optimum value. So the optimum value usually represented and as we have specified, it occurs, the bunching occurs once per every cycle. So that can be represented the optimum value as T naught equals to n plus 3 by 4 into T. And actually this transit time mainly depends upon the voltages what you apply and the repeller space. The so repeller voltage and anode voltage. Uh, and you can also represent from this T naught, you can also represent this as n capital N into T. So N indicating it is the uh, mode of oscillation in which mode it is in n plus 3 by 4 small n plus 3 by 4 small n is an integer you can take 0 1 2 3 and so on uh, 
if I want to calculate the frequency, you can also calculate from this uh, operating frequency F0, N by F0, F0 representing the operating frequency of this. So, N will be the modes of oscillation, the mode of oscillation you can represent with 0, small n as 0, you will get 0 plus 3 by 4, so which gives you 3 by 4, 1 3 by 4, 2 3 by 4 and 3 3 by 4 etc for different modes representing 0th mode, first mode, second mode and so on. So, the lowest mode which occurs usually for a maximum repeller voltage. So, if you have a maximum repeller voltage, um, as you know maximum voltage if I apply to repeller electrode, so it, it will not travel more distance towards the uh, repeller. If I decrease the repeller voltage, as the electrons has gained the energy, they can move towards uh, uh, your repeller electrode, more distance it can travel. Less repeller voltage, more distance towards your repeller electrode. Maximum voltage, less distance that it can travel because maximum repulsion that you have, no. So maximum repulsion you have and obviously you will have a maximum power output. So the lowest mode will have a maximum power output. Uh, higher order modes obviously occurs at lower repeller, repeller voltages and even if you observe the graph you will have uh, uh, the electrons will travel more towards your repeller electrode distance more distance it will travel. So power output obviously reduces. The maximum power output of a reflex klystron uh, and the resonant frequency versus your repeller voltage which you can find in this graph gives you the mode curves and you can observe here uh, maximum power output that you will get for the lowest mode and higher if you increase the mode if you order of the mode if it is increasing the power output keeps on reduces which occurs at lower repeller voltages for higher repeller voltage you will get a maximum power output with uh, lower order mode and the same thing you can observe here uh, considering on x axis the negative repeller voltage and on y axis you will be considering the power output and uh, you can observe first order mode that is one mode 1 3 by 4 will have a maximum power output at the center point and uh, uh, you, you will be calculating the bandwidth uh, for half power points corresponding to the center point you will be calculating the resonating, resonating frequency of the uh, device. Similarly, if the order of the mode increases, the power output decreases. Second order mode will have uh, less power output, third order mode still less power output. Uh, uh, and the corresponding in the same manner, if you calculate the bandwidth electronic tuning range, we call it as the tuning range for half, half power points, uh, it keeps on increases for a lower order modes, uh, sorry higher order modes, for higher order modes it keeps on increases, for a lower order mode the tuning range will be less, okay. Uh, the power output and uh, frequency can be, elect which will be controlled electronically by varying the repeller voltage and the expressions for those parameters in terms of repeller voltages. Uh, to, uh, they are important to draw your mode curves. We will be looking into those expressions, empirical formulas, no need to have a derivation. Then coming to for specific combinations of anode and repeller voltages which gives you the mode or optimum values of transit time which is nothing but a mode. So each mode you will have a center frequency which is determined by the physical size of the cavity. And that electronic uh, uh, tuning range and electronic tuning sensitivity which can be varied with respect to the frequency and the voltage, repeller voltage and can be calculated by using these two formulas. ETR representing electronic tuning range. It is the distance uh, difference between the two frequencies F2 minus F1 that is for a particular mode. Similarly, tuning sensitivity if I want to calculate difference in frequency to the difference in voltage. This voltage is a repeller voltage which we need to calculate, which we are calculating. Similar manner, if I uh, want to define the next one like a power output and efficiency of a reflux klystron, the power output 
uh, which is maximum for a lower order modes as we had seen and it occurs for every uh, one cycle per cycle uh, for every uh, uh, bunch will be formed one per once per once in every cycle if bunch bunched electrons they'll return uh, maximum output to the cavity and uh, the cavity as we know which is maintained at high positive potential so the velocity modulation is the one which gives you uh, the power output velocity modulation is the one which causes the uh, oscillations to occur and uh, maximum power output to occur so uh, to calculate the maximum power output we call it as a radio frequency power output prf it depends upon a few with a few assumptions so these are the few assumptions which we will make out to calculate so cavity grids and the repeller are uh, plane parallel to parallel and very large in extent no rf field is excited in the R repeller space electrons are not intercepted by the cathode and anode uh, cathode anode uh, so cavity anode grid no debunging uh, takes place in the repeller space with all these assumptions we can calculate the rf power output which is an empirical formula 0.3986 v not i not v not and i not representing your repeller voltage and uh, so sorry beam voltage and beam current or we also call it as anode voltage and anode current v not i not whereas we are representing your repeller voltage f representing the operating frequency and l representing the repeller space so it is the space between the cavity and the repeller electrode and uh, this is electron charge mass and multiplied with your uh, um, uh, anode voltage you can observe the rf power output which is inversely proportional to the uh, uh, frequency and the length once if you fix the length so you can say that power output is inversely proportional to the uh, frequency of operation in the same manner efficiency if i want to evaluate we know that efficiency of a circuit it is the one oscillator with uh, we know that oscillator is the one which converts or which generates oscillations on its own or you can uh, the dc power output is converted into ac power output so the electron efficiency electronic efficiency if i want to calculate which is uh, prf to pdc prf already we know that p 0.3986 i not v not by n for considering optimum value then dc power output if i want to evaluate which is nothing but uh, voltage into current rms value v not i not so if you divide the efficiency you will get it as 0.3986 divided by n not even 39.6 if you operate at different modes then efficiency keeps on reduces you can observe this is for the first mode 1 3 by 4 mode you evaluate uh, n value efficiency you can evaluate which gives you around 22.7% and in the same manner you can also evaluate the operating frequency and the repeller voltage so the operating frequency uh, empirical formulas to be remembered so depends upon your repeller voltage and the anode voltage and the mode of operation uh, and the length you can observe these two are inversely proportional f and l are inversely proportional this is an empirical formula to be remembered in the similar manner the repeller voltage uh, you can calculate as 6.74375 into 10 power minus 6 multiplied with the frequency frequency to be considered in hertz if they give in gigahertz convert that into hertz and represent and l to be mentioned in meters Uh, divided by n n indicating the mode of operation the square root of v not minus v not so you'll get the repeller voltage as a negative that's the reason why they have considered as a modulus so if i won't consider this as modulus you'll get negative in negative or sometimes if they ask you to calculate the bandwidth the dvr by dfh df so differential voltage to the differential frequency you can calculate by using this. now we will look at a uh, few problems related to the reflex klistron you observe here so a reflex klistron which is to be operated at the frequency they had given you the frequency f value which is in gigahertz 10 gigahertz and a dc beam voltage that is v not value which they had given beam voltage not repeller voltage v not is a beam voltage 
300 volts and the repeller space that is L value that specified which is 0.1 centimeters in centimeters they had given if I want to evaluate you need to convert that into meters so multiply that with 10 power minus 2 and the mode of operation which they have specified is the third order mode 3 1 by 4 so you can calculate the n value uh, 3 1 by 4 or sorry it is 1 3 by 4 not 3 1 by 4 1 3 by 4 you are asked to evaluate the power output and the corresponding repeller voltage uh, vr value prf value they have asked you to evaluate and with the beam current i naught value they are given so my optimum value of power output formula to, to be made use direct substitution which gives you the power output as 0.3986 V naught I naught, V naught is 300 volts, I naught is 20 milliamps divided by the mode, mode is 1 3 by 4, uh, first mode, first order mode gives you the value of power output as 1.365 watts and the repeller voltage they are asking you to evaluate. So formula for evaluating the repeller voltage is 6.74 into 10 power minus 6. F must be in hertz and L must be in meters. Convert that. So 10 gigahertz frequency they had given. For 1 gigahertz means it is in 10 power 9. So 10 into 10 power 9. And L is in centimeters they had given 0.1. You need to convert into meters. So 0.1 into 10 power minus 2 gives you 10 power minus 3. And mode already it is 1 3 by 4 which is 1.75. Substitute in the formula 6.74 into 10 power minus 6, 10 into 10 power 9 into 10 power minus 3 square root of uh, V naught value 300 divided by N 1.75 minus 3. You evaluate, you will get the value of repeller voltage. In the same manner, if we observe uh, another problem, it is the one specifying a reflex klystron which is operated at 5 gigahertz frequency they had given f value and dc beam voltage v naught also they had given 350 volts repeller spacing l value they had given 0.5 centimeters and the mode of operation which is given as third order mode 3 3 by 4 and they are asking you to calculate the bandwidth so bandwidth is delta vr by delta f over a Calculate bandwidth over delta Vr as 1 volt. So, delta Vr value that given. So, you, you need to evaluate uh, bandwidth that is delta F. So, from this formula, delta Vr value which they are given as 1 and delta F value, same formula, uh, delta Vr we are considering. So, delta F correspondingly. So, delta F value you can evaluate. So, length you know uh, 0.5 centimeters and delta F to be evaluated, 350 is the repeller voltage which they had given, N is uh, third order mode and rest all were known to you, you need to evaluate delta F. It is just a mathematical calculation which gives you delta F frequency uh, that is a bandwidth F2 minus F1 in the tuning range which is 5.948 megahertz. Okay. So in the same manner, if you look at the application, in the same manner, you can solve for n number of problems. Just the direct substitution, you need to remember the formulas uh, with the given values, substitute and determine the, uh, determine the parameters, required parameters. So coming to the applications, uh, applications of your uh, reflex klystron, so which is mainly used in radar receiver or radio receivers. So, uh, in radio receiver part, uh, part, if you observe, we will be making use a super heterodyne type. So, uh, as discussed in first session, in the receiver part, we will be down converting the radio frequency signal to intermediate frequency using a mixer and local oscillator. So, the local oscillator uh, which will generate the microwave uh, signal, microwave signals. So, in that part, we will be making use this reflux klystron. And uh, in portable microwave links, even in pump oscillators, we will be using a parametric pump oscillator in parametric amplifier. Pump oscillator is one of the block in parametric amplifier. In that pump oscillator, they will make use this reflex klystron. And uh, the same thing can be used as a signal source in microwave generator with variable frequency. 
already as we had seen the performance characteristics which gives a less it is a low power output low power output and low efficient device and gives uh, and it works uh, works on uh, current mod velocity and current modulation and uh, it is of linear type the reflex klystron which is of linear type and is used in uh, radar receivers local oscillator and a pump oscillator in this uh, uh, places as a signal source of variable frequency this shows the reflex klystron structure which is used in pump oscillator uh, and you can observe uh, today in today's class as we had seen uh, reflex klystron working performance characteristics applications uh, modes and mode curves then followed by uh, uh, parameters like output power efficiency output power and efficiency uh, repeller voltage bandwidth uh, problems based on that then uh, applications of reflex klystron so reflex klystron portion has completed in this session thank you